Hello folks, welcome to the Only Aki's channel. My name is David and I'm here to take you through a quick preview of Hamilton via Broth, which is taking place on Wednesday night. Now it's just myself this evening that's taking you through this preview and um, because we've had quick games in succession, we've not had the chance to plan a full podcast with Ben and Brandon involved. So it's just going to be myself and we're going to have a look at both teams and I'll give my thoughts on the match coming ahead. Now, looking at it, both teams are actually, funnily enough, in very similar form. If you look at it on paper, both teams with only one defeat in their last five games. However, the real difference is that our both have won three of those games, drawn one and lost one, whereas Hamilton have only won one and drawn three and lost the other. That kind of tells you everything you need to know about the differences in the two teams at the moment. Our both have the ability to grind out results um, and see a game through, whereas Hamilton are the complete opposite at the moment. We've been dominating games, um, but again, just don't have the ability to see that through. No cutting edge, um, no bottle about us, and we're then dropping points, and it's becoming a real regular occurrence. So on paper, it looked like a, a great run with all these unbeaten matches, but we all know from seeing these firsthand that it really should be more. Whereas you're, you're thinking it will be great to get the point, but when they actually see the game unfold, it's more of a settling for a point, which isn't good enough for a team like Hamilton um, in this division, in my opinion anyway. Um, looking at it, I mean, on paper, I've said this a few times, um, <laughs> we're starting to lose the right to say this, but looking at the two squads, Hamilton's, far superior when you look at the players that we have at our disposal. I mean, the main thing is that we're a full-time team. Looking at kind of every position on the park, there isn't many positions where you would say that our both are much better equipped than ourselves. Um, there is one position in particular, but we're going to go into that a little bit later. You probably know who I'm talking about with that. But the difference between Hamilton and our both is both had that feel-good factor, whereas, like I say, we have much better players and a better squad, but there's no denying our both are a much better team than us at the moment. Um, there's just a feel-good factor about them. They keep it simple. I mean, the fact that they are a part-time team probably works in their favour for ourselves, where, especially when they're on the run that they're on. I mean, they'll keep it simple, train two nights a week. It's working on a, on the park, so they won't change things too much. They probably find their training isn't overly tactical. And all credit to them, it's paying off and they're getting these results. I mean, the the result against Kilmarnock on Friday night was a perfect example of their season. They've, they were much better all over the park. They were tenacious. They were direct. They took their chances. Um, whereas Aki's seem to be all style and no substance. We can pass the par uh, the ball about or the park all game, completely dominate possession, but absolutely do nothing with it. I mean, the thing that strikes me about the, the commandment result for our both was if you saw the game, Jack Hamilton took the goal when it was really he had no right to score that. He, he made an effort from 25 yards. The keeper really should have done so much better with it. But the fact of the matter is the boy took that chance and got the goal from it. We just don't get attempts in on goal. And it's the old cliche, you don't shoot, you don't score, you don't score, you don't win games. And that is the difference between ourselves just now. So we can have all the ball and all the style and all we want, but if we're not scoring goals, we're going to get nowhere. Whereas you can be old-fashioned, lump it up the park, but if you've got someone who can bring it down and take an effort, um, it will pay off for you. And that's shown. Look at the, the points tally and comparisons. Um, now, a broth, we all know the one to watch with them is, is Jack Hamilton. Obviously, for the first half of the season, he had Joel Nubley on loan from uh, Livingston, and he absolutely tore it up um, for, for a broth. He was superb getting recalled in January, which everybody would have predicted and everyone would understand where a striker on that kind of form. And then return, they got Jack Hamilton back and um, they had the season previous. Jack Hamilton's a player that on the podcast we've mentioned is someone we feel an up-and-coming young Scottish striker. Perfect investment for a team like Hamilton and it's just not the kind of way or the market that we explore. And it's just a kick in the teeth when you see he's, he's scored five goals in five games since returning to our growth. He's big, he's physical, his work rate is superb. He saw that on Friday, and then he'll take an effort on goal, whereas 
sometimes we've seen our strikers have it on a plate and not being able to finish it. Um, and it's just it's just huge differences. Um, like you say, every team who doesn't have a goal stro- scoring striker will envy one that does. Um, and Olivia have had two of the best this season. Um, looking at this game, trying to think of how we'll line up for that. I think it will be a very similar lineup to the Arbroath game, uh, to the Wraith Rovers game at the weekend. Um, we're not really into the, the whole making changes or wholesale changes to sides, which we've seen, even when we as fans know it's actually merited. Um, I think there'll be minimal changes um, for this game. I think it will be Joe Hilton and goals, um, someone who's been pretty solid of late. Um, again, I think if you asked all Aki's fans, they would probably like to have our own established number one, which we've went into in our transfer podcast. But Hilton, I would say, is your number one at the moment. Um, so Hilton will play in goals. Uh, it'll be a back four um, with uh, Kieran McDonald at left back, uh, Mihai Popescu and Daniel Riley as the two centre halves. Now, the right back position is one that I've kind of got a question marks over. Um, I think we'll go with Jamie Hamilton because he's been playing all the games recently. But I would like to see us eventually kind of persevere with Stephen Lawson. I mean, obviously, the fact that he's not featured in um, the games since he's arrived obviously screams out about his match fitness. Um, but there's got to be a point where you've got to start bedding them in, even maybe give them a substitute appearance or start them um, and be prepared to take them off maybe in 60 minutes or so. Um, I think having Stephen Lawson playing ahead of Jamie Hamilton as well as Jamie Hamilton has been playing recently, I think it will just give us a total different dimension. I think it will give the ability to kind of go back to the Aki style of old and have the two fullbacks press more. Um, I mean, for as solid as Kieran McDonald has been this season, um, we've not really exploited his qualities, which is his directness and how he does like to get forward. Um, I feel like having someone on the opposite side doing that can maybe totally change the dynamic of the team. So I don't know if he's quite ready yet, but if he is, I would like to see Stephen Lawson um, make a start on Wednesday. In the middle of the park, um, I think it will be um, Scott Martin again um, with Josh Mullen. But I think instead of Regan Mimnaw, um, I would personally go with Lewis Spence. Um, he made a substitute appearance, got some minutes under his belt. Hopefully he's ready to make a start and hopefully that'll totally change the dynamic of that midfield. In the last few weeks we've complained about how lightweight it's been and there's no muscle and no kind of dogness um, to kind of win the ball back um, or we've even questioned some of the effort from the players that have played there. I'm not going to name those by name, but I think having a midfield of Martin, Spence and Josh Mullen gives us a whole different dynamic. It's got your ball winners, um, it's got some muscle and then you've got your creative um, player with Josh Mullen who can then start the passes moving forward. Um, I think there's going to be a slight change to um, the Wraith Rovers game where we started with Andy Ryan and David Moyo up top. I think we're going to go back to the one striker. Um, I think I would personally go with Kai Kennedy and Smith on the two wings and then have Andy Ryan up front on his own. Obviously, you're missing that physical presence with David Moyo, but end of the day, is a striker's job is to score goals. Andy Ryan, it's not exactly been prolific this season, but he has been our most dangerous striker, without doubt. Um, we've seen him create goals on his own. Um, he's taking shots on right or nothing. Um, I'd like to see us exploit the options we have out wide with Kai Kennedy and Lewis Smith as well. I mean, <laughs> like Brandon jokes many times with myself, if this was football manager, it would be so much simpler because on paper we have a we really do have some great options in this squad, but it's just not kind of coming to fruition at the moment for us. Um, I do think that's something that maybe we need to start questioning the system, the coaching, the management. Because looking at this team, that's that this eleven that I've just named, that's a good squad. That's a that's a top four championship side without doubt. Maybe even higher, but it's, we just don't play like that. We just with no conviction. Definitely need um, another option up top, and it's something that I'm sick of going through it. When you look at players like Jack Hamilton and the potential they have, we need to invest in someone like that. There's signs out there that there are players with that potential in Scotland and players that will definitely go to the next level. 
and you've seen teams in the past kind of jump in and take a player before they are totally outpriced. Perfect example I've said many times is when Dunfermline took Kevin Nisbet from Wraith Rovers. You saw the potential there. You saw the sell-on potential. Get them there. It will cost money, but it's you have to spend money to make money. Jack Hamilton is clearly a player of that potential. Another one that comes to mind um, is Anton Dowds, who excelled at our growth. He's now um, transformed that into his Falkirk career now, whereas before he went on loan, people would say his Falkirk career is dead and buried. He's shown that he's got another level to him, but this isn't a transfer podcast. I could go on all day about striker targets and, and what I feel we need. Time to go into the, the kind of business um, end of that um, and go into a prediction. Um, I feel it's it's one of those games where, like I said before, the, the Wraith Rovers game, with the preview of that, I just snapped your hand off for a point. But when you see how the game unfolds, it's more like we've settled for a point and we should have done so much better. But let's not get carried away with this one. I would snap your hand off for a point away to our growth. They are on fire. They're a very organised team. Very simple way of playing, but so effective. And they, they, the, they have the ability to exploit bad teams around them. So if we go there like we did earlier in the season and things don't click with us, they'll exploit that. So they have the ability, like they've proven, to completely destroy a team like Hamilton if it's not clicking. So it's all about our game and being organised. It's going to be incredibly tough. Um, I would need to be honest, my prediction for this game would be a 2-0 defeat. Our both are just clicking on all levels at the moment and... I really do, like, you ha- you can't help but have a soft spot for a team like a bro where they define the odds, and you can't help but be jealous, because that's the team that Hamilton have always been in the past, and we're a shadow of that at the moment. Um, but anything we can take away for that would be a huge bonus, but I don't see it happening. Um, I put out a tweet um, before um, the podcast recording, just to kind of ask for a couple of fans' thoughts um, on the game coming ahead. I've got a couple of those that I'm going to read out. The first one is from Alan, which says, it will be a tough game on Wednesday. Can't see us taking anything from the game. The defence has been decent the last few weeks, but we can't rely on Josh Popescu and Dan to perform. It's a team game and the front players in midfield need to step up. Hashtag sign a striker. My thoughts exactly. Um, the, don't get me wrong, guys like Danny O'Reilly, We've went over this in the the transfer podcast. He's not someone we've really needed, but you can't deny the guys came in and settled in perfectly. We've not got a good record of players coming in and having that effect. Um, So credit's got to be given on the recruitment of him and the player himself. He's been brilliant since he's came in. And I do think that he's someone that when we're thinking and talking about planning ahead for next year, Danny O'Reilly is in your 11. Um, That's a position we've got settled and you know that he'll be ready and he'll probably be even better for having this half season under his belt and he'll probably be a better player next season. Popescu as well, um, I think, has been superb. I think he's starting to kind of go up a level. Um, is really showing how kind of adjusted to our team and style that he's become and I really admire uh, Mihai Popescu. I think he puts a lot of effort in. And I think it's someone that I would love to see us make a permanent move for. My only concern is the Bruce Anderson effect that I've seen so many times is a lone player excelling at Hamilton. We don't make the moves to make it permanent and then someone higher up from ourselves will do what we want. Um, I think we need to start looking at making a permanent move for him. Um, As far as I'm aware, his contract at Hearts is up in the summer, so we are able to offer a contract. Surely some form of discussion has been had there. Uh, One more comment to read out um, from MD, um, saying, get Moyo dropped, Ryan up front and someone else in right mid. Our young guys should be fitter and hungrier than them, but they won't be. Whilst their growth guys are working right now, our academy boys will be in Starbucks or playing FIFA. I mean, a couple of points there could be a whole podcast on its own. Um, my thoughts um, for what I, I said out on my, my starting 11 prediction, I do think that it would be Ryan on his own. Uh, Moyo would get dropped. Just not nothing against David Moyo. Um, we are fans of him on this podcast. He's work rate. Um, has to be commended. He's, he puts the effort in, but 
like it's becoming more and more evident. A lot of people are tweeting about this as well. I've seen even more of it on Saturdays. You need your strikers to score goals. He just doesn't seem to have that in him. And we all root for him and would love to see him go on a run. But it's, it's getting the fact it's been years and years now and it's just not translating. Um, we need them to score goals. And we all thought that with his work rate, his physicality, his, like the effort he puts on the park, that even maybe they stepped down to the championship would be brilliant for him. But it's still not translated that way. It might be our fault, it might be the style of play that we have, but we need to start scoring goals more regular and have the strikers contribute more. Um, Andy Ryan goes without saying he's, he's the most lethal striker we have in the squad. And unfortunately, that's not saying a lot at the moment. He, he has been on good form this season, but lately he's, he's not been featuring a lot, to be fair to him, but he's not been scoring a lot either. So let's hope um, we do see a bit more for him. The comment regarding younger guys, I have, made, I have mentioned this myself in the past um, few weeks that fitness and physicality with guys like Ronan Hughes and Megan Mimnot, it, it seems to be lacking. These guys are professional footballers. They should have a bit more physicality about them. I know they're younger, but they're getting into their 20s now. This is where they should be putting on muscle, showing a bit more, and they're just not in work rate. Again, in the last podcast I mentioned, it was in their United game um, with those two again, not to kind of jump in on them, but it did seem like there was a, a kind of lack of work rate and focus there. Um, it just seemed like they didn't want to be there and they weren't enjoying it. And like I say, they've got the best job in the world. And like I say, they're just not really showing that they're all in at the moment. So I think the changes that I suggested in the park, in the middle of the park with uh, Spence and Martin, should benefits a bit more, a bit more experienced, um, and should hopefully kind of solid, uh, kind of solidify that centre of the park, um, and hopefully we can create a wee bit more from the middle as well. Uh, well, that's everything for today's preview. Uh, I hope I've kept it short and sweet. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the, the charisma uh, as young Ben, um, but I hope you've enjoyed it, and hopefully we'll enjoy the game on Wednesday, um, and we'll have our thoughts on the next podcast. Thanks for tuning in.